Hi there, I'm Jeffrey Cannell, the Director of Software Development, and we're going to go over virtual ECU testing in Vehicle Spy X. Uh, the trend that we're seeing in the industry is towards more and more simulation. Uh, so, for example, running the full ECU code in a Docker container, full end-to-end -end simulation of the entire vehicle of all the ECUs, uh, this is something that we see uh, growing, and Vehicle Spy X is scripting capabilities can be used uh, to do functional testing on these virtual ECUs. And some of the ways we've already seen this deployed with some of our early beta customers uh, is in diagnostic stack conformance testing. So testing that a specific diagnostic stack actually um, you know, conforms to the standard, operates back correctly, and in more uh, complicated edge case and timing testing where uh, it is difficult to replicate certain timing situations in the real world, but if you're running the actual full ECU code in, in a cloud environment, you're able to uh, run more of these sort of edge case tests. And what's great is that uh, Vehicle Spy X lets you sort of, the tester sort of choose their interaction level. So if you were, for example, testing session persistence in diagnostics, you can interact with the transport layer. If you were testing, um, the external behavior of say whether a routine control does what it's supposed to whether it turns on a light or something uh, you can interact directly at the service layer so we'll go over um, creating some tests for diagnostics over ip so as a quick refresher it's a diagnostics over ip is a protocol for sending iso 14229 or sometimes known as uds diagnostics over um, ip networks so there's a udp discovery protocol and then uh, tcp is used for diagnostics a vehicle spy X's diagnostic layer can be configured to use the ISO 13400 as a transport layer, and the rest of your diagnostics basically stays the same. So switching over here to Python, um, I'm going to start with, uh, I'll give a quick overview. This is our virtual ECU. Uh, this is a server. So um, you can see here we're setting up ISO 13400, set up the session parameters, configure the session layer, configure the service layer, add in some services. This is um, in virtual ECU that will be representative of a full ECU simulation running in some sort of cloud environment. So we'll actually run this um, concurrently with our tests and it will be connected on the loopback adapter. So in Linux, there's a Ethernet loopback adapter. So I'll run the virtual ECU in one process um, and then we'll connect to it in another process over the loopback adapter and actually uh, perform some tests on it. So I will go ahead and task that actually can run concurrently here in Visual Studio Code. And here we can see we've actually booted up the uh, virtual ECU that's running. And then now we are going to have our, cl our uh, class that we'll write that will be our actual functional tests. Um, so this is just some simple boilerplate code and everything that we're doing here can be found in the getting started with diagnostics um, over here at the very end in the examples. These are basically um, using these UDS client and UDS server with DOIP examples that are in the documentation. So everything we have here, you can head to the documentation to uh, to get the full details. So uh, one thing that's really great about all of uh, about di about Vehicle Spy X scripting is that you can use everything you know from Python already. So in this case, the unit test uh, framework can just be used directly along with your vehicle bus analysis tools that Vehicle Spy X gives you. So you sort of can pick and choose what it is you want to work on. And so we'll set up a uh, test to actually verify that the um, that the, t the server ECU responds correctly to uh, the vehicle identification request. So here we're actually checking if we get a response to the vehicle identification request. So we can say self.assert equal. And here we're actually asserting that we got a response from the vehicle. And then now all we, all we have is to simply run it and we can actually see that our tests 
There we go. Detected ECU. Okay, ran one test. And once again, the great thing about uh, scripting here is that you're here in Visual Studio Code or any of your other development environments. And you can go ahead and step through and look at the uh, responses. So here we can come in and inspect and we can see we got one response and here's this entity identification object and here's the VIN and the stink status and the EID and the GID and the address. So you can go ahead and, and debug and um, quickly iterate through developing your tests by setting breakpoints, inspecting variables, and then uh, continuing on. So you get a really quick um, iteration time, much faster than if you were dealing solely um, in a GUI or uh, with a real ECU. So uh, I'm going to actually get the information from the, uh, the entity that was discovered, and I'm going to decode VIN that was returned and we'll say the encoding is ASCII and then assert equal we're going to assert that the VIN is actually go ahead and open this up that the VIN that we got was the one we expected to get so I'll go over here to the server code and copy what the actual VIN was so here you can see we're actually asserting that the VIN was what we wanted it to be and of course we can go ahead quickly iterate run our tests and verify that the VIN was indeed correct I'm going to for our next tech test set up the address information that we need to be able to talk to it. So we're going to say the tester address comes from the from the tester address, which is us. Get the address that came back from the identification. Okay, so now we have the actual address info that we can use to talk to this um, talk to this device that we discovered. So not only can we do uh, simple tests like verifying that what we read was correct, but we can also interact with the ECU and verify that its behavior um, from some operation we perform on it is correct. So one thing we can do is uh, in DOIP we can get the entity status which will give us uh, sort of um, some properties and parameters of the client itself and one thing we can do is say we can for example say that the entity status TCP socket count is going to be less than the entity status TTV sockets max and if we go ahead and run this and once again we can get this really nice uh, quick iteration cycle debug here we can say okay the total number of sockets are open is zero the the max is 10 we can assert that that's less and there we go but now what if we were to actually uh, perform an operation here let's let's say let's do a session control um, so we'll set, go do a session control to session one, and we're going to actually verify that the um, the sockets open the socket count that comes back from the entity uh, from the entity status request actually increments. So now we're performing a diagnostic operation and getting the and verifying that the operation itself performed the desired, uh, the desired, affected the desired behavior. So now we're actually going to check to see that the new TCP sockets count that we got is greater than the original one after we actually open the session up. So we can go ahead here. Once again, we get sort of this fast iteration cycle, run our tests. And now we can see that the new TCP socket count is indeed greater than the old one. And that was all done by performing a session control on our virtual ECU and then verifying that the affected behavior was indeed uh, was indeed applied. So you can see how using these scripts, you're able to quickly create uh, functional tests for virtual ECUs that could be put inside of a cloud environment as part of a CI or CD system to quickly verify the behavior of 
virtual ECUs, perhaps on every code commit or any sort of really quick iteration cycle that you want, that's a lot more uh, time effective than uh, manually sitting down and um, running a bunch of jobs and sort of checking them off on an Excel sheet or something like that. So uh, we look forward to talking to you and helping you explore how you can take this technology and help make your testers and developers more productive. Thank you.